Hey everyone, it's been seven days since my last video, and I must confess, I'm about to suggest that Jesse Brown is guilty of a number of crimes. All right, so who is Jesse Brown? Jesse runs a website and podcast ineptly named Canada Land, and he's best known for a story that I shall call the Gian Gameshi hoax. Jesse Brown started out his writing career pulling hoaxes on the media, and this is what he has continued to do. I've been investigating the trial of Gian Gameshi extensively, and based on my investigations, I've become a practical threat to Jesse Brown, as he revealed in a recent article in which he calls me a bigot and accuses me of hate crimes. Be still, my heart. Now, I want to mention this up front because those are serious accusations he's made against me, and it tells you how easy it is for Jesse Brown to publish defamatory articles. As a side note, Jesse did not contact me for comment before or after publication. For my part, I have tweeted at Jesse Brown for months and sent an email to his organization asking for comment from him on evidence that I was uncovering. He has never responded until now. Now, of course, Jesse Brown doesn't like me. I've been investigating him for fraud for many months now, and I've made no secret about it. It is to be expected that Jesse Brown thinks I'm a very bad person and that I should feel bad. Jesse, as most people would, much prefers to be the one making allegations than being on the accused side. So that sheds a little perspective on why Jesse Brown would publish such scurrilous accusations against me. In addition to calling me a bigot, Jesse Brown also asserts that I have violated a court order, specifically a publication ban on a witness's name in the Gian Gameshi trial. Now, I find this interesting for a few reasons. First of all, it's interesting because despite his report, I've not actually been charged with the crime. The video was not removed by police, it was removed by me, and the issue, as far as I'm concerned, is not actually resolved. It's a shame that Jesse Brown thinks it's okay to publish his assertions about me without contacting me first. If he had, I might have been able to clear some things up for him. How embarrassing for you, Jesse. Now, while it's possible that I might be charged with the crime, Jesse should be hoping that I'm not because, well, I got the information from something published on his website. The video in question was about an article published on his website, Canada Land, and that article is still live. I'm not going to tell you which article it was, for obvious reasons. The second interesting thing is that Jesse Brown thinks this particular video discredits me, but what he's actually done is tell you what a good investigator I am. As Jesse announces, I did in fact correctly discover the identity of the third witness, a woman who was found by a Canadian judge to have lied under oath, maliciously collaborated with another accuser, and to have willfully deceived police. That's kind of a matter of public interest. I was not in courtroom 125, and unlike Jesse, I had no way of knowing who this woman was unless someone else had published identifying information. If Jesse had bothered to contact me, I could have explained how he himself is the one who published that information. Again, how embarrassing for you, Jesse. At this point, you and Jesse might be thinking I'm just going to accuse him of defamation. But you'd be wrong. That's too easy and not nearly the most significant of the terrible things he has done. Now, the article that I'm responding to is called An Open Response to Christy Blatchford's Request for Comment. So, Jesse's defamatory remarks about my person are actually just incidental to his article, which was actually a response to Christy Blatchford. He just threw defamatory remarks in there because he's angry with me. I understand why, though, but I'm not very sympathetic. For some background, Christy Blatchford wrote an excellent article in the National Post, which I'll link below, and it drew attention not just to Jesse Brown's problematic intimate connection to one of his sources in the Gameshi hoax, Catherine Burrell, but to a podcast they did together in 2013, which exposes lies about Burrell's actual experience working for the CBC and the actual reasons why she left. The story told in the podcast stands in stark contrast to the story Ms. Burrell and her good friend Jesse Brown 
told when they reframed events to build their victim narrative. Catherine Burrell, not only a close friend of Jesse Brown's for about 10 years, but one of his Patreon supporters as well, was one of the four original accusers in Jesse Brown's Big Scoop, which ran in the Toronto Star. Jesse does not divulge this relationship in the original article, nor does he tell the reader that Ms. Burrell is a Patreon supporter of his podcast show. That is, in fact, the podcast show featuring a chat between Catherine Burrell and Jesse Brown, wherein they chow down on pizza while reminiscing and laughing about Burrell's highly inappropriate sexualized behavior while she worked at the CBC. This podcast was recorded only a few months before Jesse started building his story that would destroy Gian Gomeshi's life. Kevin Donovan, the investigative reporter assigned by the Toronto Star to work with Jesse Brown, was aware of the Burrell-Brown relationship and has been quoted as saying, A reporter who has a connection or friendship with someone who is an alleged victim in a story cannot objectively do his or her job. It's very important for journalists to be open about these things and to know when to step back. In the same article, Jesse Brown is quoted as saying, He, Donovan, knew and never raised it as an issue. In fact, he never bothered to interview her prior to our first story's publication, though he had opportunity to do so. In Jesse's response to Christy Blatchford, he claims that it was he, not Catherine Burrell, who said that Burrell had been the sexually inappropriate one in the workplace. Being sexual at work? I said that, she didn't, and I must admit I never once saw her being that way at the CBC. Well, that's absurd. Jesse is trying to cover up the truth by claiming that he's not lying now, he was lying back then. I guess one of the things that Jesse didn't learn from the Gian Gomeshi trial was how credibility works. The question the jury should be asking here is whether or not Jesse Brown, who has given two different versions of events, was more likely to be telling the truth while hanging out, having a friendly chat with his good friend, Ms. Burrell, or whether he's more likely to be telling the truth now that his lie has been discovered and he's panicking a bit. I think the answer is obvious. And remember that Jessie has already informed you what a good investigator I am. In her article in the National Post, Christy Blatchford graciously credited me for bringing this podcast to her attention. I had told her about it in a short email and was surprised but happy to have heard back from her when she thanked me for the tip. She's a very busy woman, and, I noted, also very competent. Ms. Blatchford located the podcast on her own. I had only told her the name of it, and she independently reached her own conclusions about the podcast's contents after listening to it herself. Factually, and I know Jesse Brown isn't all that comfortable with actual facts, nevertheless, the National Post article only says that I first publicized the podcast in connection to the Gameshi accusations, and that is factually true. Ms. Blatchford mentions me once more at the end of her article, or near the end, as follows. As the YouTube vlogger Davison remarked, the interview suggests the CBC environment was proper and dry, and that it was the woman who brought inappropriate sexual conduct into the office. Now, that's drastically different than what Jesse reports. Beyond your hypothetical speculation, all the piece is based on is an old episode of my podcast and on YouTuber Diana Davison's theories. Why wouldn't you get a quote from a legal expert or even ask Catherine Burrell herself for comment? Why would Christy Blatchford need a legal expert to tell her what she heard on your podcast, Jesse? The article is based entirely on Ms. Blatchford having listened to the podcast and come to her own conclusions. She specifically agrees with me on only one issue, that what Jesse Brown and Catherine Burrell said about working at the CBC was that it was proper and dry, with strict rules, and that Burrell did not comply with the CBC's expectations for a non-sexualized workplace environment. That is a conclusion that any reasonable person would reach if they listened to the Rabid Unicorn podcast, which is, incidentally, still posted and live on Canada Land. Now, Jesse Brown has also hosted on his website the claim that an ex-Q employee, Roberto Verri, is the only purported witness to Catherine Burrell's sexual assault claims. Jesse has a podcast with Roberto Verri, in which Verri tells us he worked at Q in 2009 and 2010, 
and that he witnessed Gian Gameshi grab Burrell by the hips while she was bent over her desk, and that Gameshi had thrust his pelvis into Burrell's backside four or five times without her consent. This is the crime that Gameshi was charged with in regards to Jesse's friend, and Catherine Burrell claims it happened February 7th, 2008. You'll note that that is well over a year before Roberto Verri tells us he worked there. I'm here talking with Roberto Verri. Roberto, uh, when did you work at Q? Um, 2000, uh, 2009 to 2010. So, so yeah, about September 2009 to, to, to September 2010. Okay. I find it really amusing that Burrell remembers the exact day of this event, over a year before her alleged witness ever worked there. Because she previously said that when Very offered to, quote, back her up, that she claimed she didn't remember the incident at all. From the Canada Land podcast with Roberto Very, Jesse tells us. She's like, oh yeah, I, I, I forgot about that one. When Burrell made her statement to Toronto police that she was assaulted in 2008, she probably hadn't listened to the Canada Land podcast with her witness, Roberto Verri, where he states... Yeah, but September 2009 to, to, to September 2010. Okay. Speaking of credibility issues, Kevin Donovan, of all people, published in the Toronto Star that Roberto Verri was in fact the witness in the trial. Meanwhile, the Crown prepared its case. Burrell's testimony would be the main part of the Crown's case, but unlike the previous complainants, there was a witness and a paper trail. Dun, dun, dun. The witness, Roberto Verri, who had worked at Q, has previously said publicly that he witnessed Gomeshi's actions. On Wednesday, he told the star in a brief telephone interview he was going to testify if the case has proceeded to trial. In November 2014, Verri had told Jesse Brown in an interview for Brown's Canada Land podcast what he saw on February 7, 2008 in the Q studio. <laughs> Oh, man. So, Barry tells us he worked with Burrell 2009 to 2010, right at the beginning of the podcast. It's not like Donovan even had to listen to the whole thing to investigate these allegations. He just had to listen to, like, the first few seconds after the intro. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. So, Jesse Brown, I'm going to suggest that you are guilty of conspiring to commit a crime and of aiding and abetting criminals. Perjury and false accusations are actually a crime, despite the fact that they're almost never prosecuted. Kevin Donovan, I accuse you of being a bad reporter. Additionally, Jesse has also published that Marie Hennen, Gomeshi's lawyer and widely viewed as one of Canada's top lawyers, tried to bribe a witness to accomplish a goal that couldn't actually be achieved. Jesse says to Ms. Blatchford, You wrote, I'm guessing, and only guessing, your interview with Burrell may have had something to do with the Crown agreeing to withdraw the charge against Gomeshi. You were guessing wrong. As has been reported elsewhere, it was Marie Hennen who came to the Crown peddling an apology from Gian Gomeshi. I've heard that this offer followed an earlier overture from Hennen to Burrell. It seems Gomeshi was willing to pay Burrell to drop the charges. Burrell refused. Now, this is obvious nonsense. Catherine Burrell was a witness. She's not the one who pressed the charges and, as such, was not in a position to drop the charges. Only an idiot would be confused on that issue. An even bigger idiot would publish it as if it was true. I've heard. Without consulting a lawyer to find out if his lie was even possible in the context of the Canadian court system. What Jesse Brown published implies that a lawyer of Marie Hennon's caliber and experience tried to bribe a witness. Why do people keep believing his crazy stories? Well, Jesse asks Christy Blatchford why she didn't consult a lawyer, I'll pose the same question to Jesse Brown. Why didn't Jesse ask a lawyer first whether or not his lie was even plausible? You'd think that if he was going to publish a lie, he'd at least make it a good one. Jesse Brown fans should now feel great disappointment. Your boy can't even come up with a believable lie. Oh, wait. Jesse's supporters, hashtag believe him. 
Do we now feel pity or disdain for them? I can't decide. Jesse Brown published that Gian Gameshi was the one with credibility problems, but if that was true, there would be zero incentive for the prosecutor to accept Hennon's offer. Jesse is wrongly assuming that the question here is why Gian's lawyer asked for a peace bond, saving her client money, and he should be asking, as Christy Blatchford did, why did the prosecutor agree? That's the actual question. Maybe Callahan not only saw the Rabid Unicorn podcast, but saw the Roberto Verri one as well. There's a big difference between February 7th, 2008 and September of 2009. He was probably concerned that one of his witnesses didn't even work in the office until eight months after what he claimed he witnessed. That he didn't share these practical concerns with Ms. Burrell just shows what a nice guy Callahan is. Hopefully, Callahan wasn't as nice to the Toronto police, who somehow didn't investigate thoroughly enough to find out when Roberto Verri actually worked there. One of the things we've clearly learned from both Gian Gameshi trials is that the Toronto police didn't actually investigate the accusations before they laid charges. The prosecutor, Michael Callahan, paid the price for that in the first trial, where all his witnesses betrayed him, and the public were putting a lot of pressure on him to get a better result in round two. Callahan was under pressure to get something, anything, to appease the foamy-mouthed protesters who wanted their pound of flesh. The activist public had made it clear they wouldn't tolerate another acquittal, they wouldn't tolerate another accuser being cross-examined, they wouldn't tolerate charges being dropped, and they would hold the prosecutor responsible if another accuser was found to have lied under oath. Michael Callahan was in a very difficult position. I'd say he pretty much needed a miracle, and Gian Gameshi offered him a way out. I'm going to bet that Gian Gameshi is really fucking tired and still wanting to properly grieve his father. You remember his father, who passed away mere weeks before this entire nightmare began. Do you remember that? Gian Gameshi lost his father only three weeks before his public life was shredded and most of the people he thought were friends turned against him. Now, this is, of course, just my speculation on how the decision was made, but at least it's a feasible speculation, unlike Jesse Brown's. At least my theory fits with how the Canadian legal system actually works. Reminder again, as Jesse has graciously pointed out, my investigation into this case and my speculations about it have turned out to be correct. About something I shouldn't have known. So, I'm a pretty good guesser. I don't know why he thought his accusations against me would damage my credibility. So, I'm going to finish this video by suggesting again that Jesse Brown is guilty of one more crime, violating a publication ban and printing identifying information of a witness in the Gomeshi trial. It was, after all, an article on his website that led me to correctly figuring out who she was. Not only that, it was what was said in that article that made me think that making the video was important to the public good. Jesse wants you to believe that I'm a bigot and a shoddy reporter, while also telling you I figured out the truth. And this isn't even my day job. So how silly are my theories now, Jesse? So, for those of you who are wondering what good the Toronto police are, just remember this. Policemen stop traffic, policemen stop crime. Go ask a policeman, he'll help you every time. Policeman, policeman, helps us when we're lost. Policeman, policeman, likes his salad tossed.